Hi, it's The Wire. It is July 3rd, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, for some reason, I can't get my voice to fully work today. Maybe it's being in my 50s. Who knows? But let's just talk about what can make you rich as a gambler. Now, perfection is hard to find, right? Occasionally, it pops up. Goliaths have their own problems. Wayne Gretzky in hockey. Willie Mays, rest in peace, in baseball. Edwin Moses, important name if you remember him, in track and field. Ray Robinson, in boxing. Will Chamberlain, in basketball. Now, I don't say this lightly. I understand a lot of these guys made millions and millions of dollars. But at the end of the day, people can spot a Goliath and no one roots for Goliath. They'll root for you on the way there. But when you get there, when the people understand that you're the best, then you become the entity that they root against. Right? You have a lot of Goliaths out there who have had to work on being self-deprecating, right? Who've had to literally work on looking mundane, right? Wayne Gretzky tried desperately to fit in. He understood that his game stood out. So he, of course, tried his best to look like an average guy. Let me point out in boxing, and I'm going to get to Joshua against Dubois. But in boxing, understand that Ray Robinson, when he was on top, walks away from the sport of boxing to be a dancer. Right? Mid-50s, he thought he was Sammy Davis Jr. And he made some statements and this is a guy who arguably is history's best fighter. He made some statements about not wanting to be hit in the head, about not being in love with boxing. This was him at his best. And understand, before he left, he decided to just go for the last ultimate challenge. So at a time when you didn't have super middleweight, he jumps from the middleweight division to the light heavyweight division to take on Joey Maxa in a fight that really could have been career suicide. Right? So I need for people to understand that Goliaths have their own problems. Will Chamberlain, he was out late at night. He was a Michael Jordan figure, another guy who, you know, had the world on a string and then decided that that wasn't enough. He needed mistresses in different cities, right? He was in the playoffs against the Knicks when a newspaper person spotted him between games. Bulls were down two games to none in Atlantic City, which is not close to New York City, right? Out late at night. So understand, Goliaths have their own problems. Let me point out that Goliaths have reigns, right? They, they have a stretch where they are rewriting the record book. But understand that it's a tough life because eventually that reign ends. And what you're closing out with is the Ray Robinson attitude right, of, gee, you know, this sport came naturally to me. I wasn't in love with it. I just happened to be the best at it, right? It's a, it's a unique mindset, very unique mindset. So let me just say this. In life, you have to revisit athletes, and there's a different group, right? This is the group that has the skill level 
but is unfulfilled. Right? They still have things they need to do in the sport. The sport for them is still a calling. Now, in track and field, I believe that man is Noah Lyles. You need to know him. Right? Understand, in boxing, there is the heavyweight champion, in my opinion, there's the heavyweight champion, and then there's everyone else. The only other position in the sports world that has the glow of the heavyweight champion, in my eyes, is the world's fastest man. Right? An argument can be made that right now that guy is Noah Lyles. Now, understand, Noah Lyles isn't a great technician. Here's where it separates him from the Goliaths, right? He's not Edwin Moses, who has everything mapped out, who's a master at everything, right? No, no, this is the guy who has problems. <laughs> this is the guy from real life. So understand, he has a problem getting out of the blocks. He's not usually ahead after 10 to 20 meters. But he has the highest top end speed in the sport. And understand, and this is the important part, to Lyles, it's not enough. He recently said, grabbing a world record is one of two things that I still have left to do. One, being an Olympic gold. And then two, grabbing a world record. It's on the list. And I aim for, as I aim for being the greatest, it's just something I've got to get that I want to get. Right? In other words, folks, this is the alpha figure who's unfulfilled. In my opinion, this is the horse to bet on in Paris. Right now, just keep that theme in mind. The alpha figure who is unfulfilled. You might see him as a multimillionaire athlete. You might see him as one of his sports cash cows. Right? But understand, the guy is whatever he says. And I know he's gone off the deep end in some interviews. But the guy's not about the money. He's actually about the calling. Because he understands what he has. And he believes what he has is an elite level of talent. So in boxing, for everything Anthony Joshua has done in the sport, Olympic gold medal, Unified heavyweight champion. Wins over Klitschko and Joe Parker. And that win over Joe Parker is aging awfully well, isn't it? I think Anthony Joshua feels that he has not gotten his due. Now this is different from Ray Robinson. Right? And Ray Robinson is one of history's more interesting figures. Understand, look into his background. You'll find out that Joe Lewis saves Ray Robinson's boxing career. After Ray Robinson arguably is an army deserter. Right? Robinson's interesting. Right? But just understand, unlike Ray Robinson, who reaches the top of boxing's Mount Everest, looks around and thinks to himself, is this all there is? You have Anthony Joshua in a Noah Lyles position. Right? Understand, Joshua's still searching. Well, maybe not still searching, but let's just say he's been searching. He's gone through, and this is a guy who doesn't need the money. He's gone through superstar trainers. Well, now he's found someone, and I believe things have clicked. Now, we need to pause here and ask ourselves, where, what exactly is Joshua's endgame? 
right? Like Noah Lyles can cavalierly say, look, I, I want an Olympic gold. I want a world record, <laughs> right? Joshua thinks he can set a standard, right? Understand, things have clicked so much that Joshua isn't saying, look at me. These other guys are bums. I can beat them. I had two off nights against Usyk. Put me back in the ring with the very best. I'll walk through them. No, that's not what Joshua is saying right now. Understand the Joshua crowd believes they have the secret sauce. When I say the Joshua crowd, I'm not talking about the fan base. And folks, I'm just telling you. The Joshua fan base is substantial. I believe it's bigger than the Fury fan base. Right? I'm not talking about the fan base. I'm talking about Joshua insiders. I believe that they believe they have figured out the theory of relativity. Right? This is almost like the atomic bomb. Right? They believe they have the trade secrets. Nobody wants to take credit for it. So I need for people to look closely at Team Joshua. Look closely at his current trainer, Ben Davison. That's a key name in boxing. You need to look at it and understand it's a hush-hush deal. Right? Here's what we know. I saw Joshua with um, Robert Garcia... Bam Rodriguez is trainer, right? Robert Garcia, who I've seen retool fighters, right? Joshua and he didn't click. I saw him with Derek James. Now understand, Derek James is a guy who really asks a lot of his fighters. You notice that in the Ryan Garcia Oscar Duarte fight, where Garcia is trying to look like Floyd Mayweather, but doesn't quite have the angles figured out. In other words. Derek James takes you out of your comfort zone, right? A guy like Ryan Garcia, and by the way, Derek James is still Ryan Garcia's trainer. A guy like Ryan Garcia, even with the great left hook, is in the ring trying to do other things. <laughs> He's trying to learn how to do a Philly shell technique, right? Understand, AJ and Derek James didn't quite click. You could tell that AJ is processing too much during his fight against Robert Hellenius, the first six rounds of that fight. Right? Understand, Hellenius had just fought somebody else. Is in the ring as a last-minute replacement to AJ. AJ is a blessed puncher. Folks, there are not that many in boxing. He's a blessed puncher. Here he is in against another blessed puncher. Hellenius today is one of the hardest punchers in the heavyweight division. And you just got the feeling that Joshua, against Hellenius, who's not defensively blessed, Joshua wouldn't let his hands go. Dare I say, he looked like Daniel Dubois did against Usyk. Right? You just got the feeling Joshua had too much on his plate. So then he's with Ben Davison. Now, tracking Joshua. Understand, his fight against Otto Wallen, who had just beaten Murat Gassiev, who is not a ham sandwich. That's a tough fight. Right? Otto Wallen, who, in my opinion, gave Tyson Fury one of his tougher fights. That's the fight where Tyson Fury is bleeding, and Tyson Fury realized he was not the athlete Otto Wallen was and had to try to close the distance. That's my take on that fight. Understand, here's AJ against the Southpaw after having lost to Usyk twice. Two of the biggest fights of AJ's career. And folks, that AJ Otto Wallen fights a jaw dropper. It's more important than the Francis Ngannou fight. Right? A.J. looked magnificent. A.J. was fighting at a faster pace. A.J.'s on his front foot at times in that fight. Valen has nowhere to go. This is the opposite 
of the Robert Hellenius fight. Here, early, AJ's asserting himself. But isn't that one of the problems with AJ? That he doesn't leave early. That you have to do something to get him going. Right? When does AJ knock down Andy Ruiz? Which is really the first action in that fight. Isn't that the third round? Right? The problem with AJ is he's not a listing. He's not a foreman. He doesn't come out and immediately let you know, hey, player, you're fighting a bully. I'm in your face. It's the first round. What are you going to do about it? He's not that guy. Right? You, you look at him and you say, wow, with this size... He's usually bigger than his opponent. With this size, with this two-handedness. Right, folks? I'm telling you, and I know, this is one of boxing's biggest mysteries. People have looked at entire fights, and they haven't seen this punch. I'm telling you that one of AJ's best punches is his left hook. You don't believe me? Look at the Klitschko fight. He knocks Klitschko down when Klitschko gets off the canvas. This is AJ's biggest moment of his career up to that point. What's the punch that AJ relies on? What's the punch that he's trying to land to end the fight? Folks, it's not a straight right hand. It's not a right hook. It's a left hook that he throws repeatedly. With AJ, the water is deep. Right? He has a lot of punches he can throw. He curiously isn't throwing left hooks against Usyk. I'm not sure what's going on. Right? Well, just understand. You look at AJ and you understand, well, he understands, that he has a lot of talent. Right? As I've said here for years, even when they were riding high, I thought AJ would beat Deontay Wilder. Right now, it's sad. It's a boxing story, right? AJ somehow went through his career without fighting Wilder, without fighting Fury, without fighting Joyce. He's finally fighting Dubois. I know Dubois is a young guy, but he's been around. Right? Just understand. In an era where the dominant group in the heavyweight division has been British heavyweights. While AJ has fought many other talented people, right? He hasn't fought a lot of British heavyweights, has he? Right? And he didn't fight a guy who was his obvious nemesis, Deontay Wilder. Right? So understand, now we're at the part of AJ's career where things have clicked. He has a trainer who, importantly, allows AJ to be AJ. The idea is that with his size and power player, there's no reason to be gun shy. Let's start emptying the holster early in the fight. Right? Understand, too. AJ destroys Otto Wallen to such an extent. That in the post-fight interview, they asked Valen what went wrong, and Valen just frankly answered Anthony Joshua. Right? The Valen fight's important because I have no doubt that AJ thinks if he has a third crack at Usyk, which he's never going to get, I think he thinks he beats Usyk. Well, now he has unfinished business. Because if Tyson Fury can beat Usyk in the rematch... Then we'll finally get, years after, and I mean years after, Fury beat Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Understand how ridiculous Anthony Joshua has been. Research him here online. You're going to find out he went through a period where, for some reason, he had less than positive things to say about Lennox Lewis, who really is a national treasure or should be in the United Kingdom. Right? Lewis, of course... Not just unified at heavyweight, Lewis undisputed at heavyweight. Understand, Lewis is one of those rare boxers who beat everyone who beat him. 
right? Just food for thought. Everyone Lewis fought. He has at least one win against. So Joshua, when he was a young man, he was confused. Folks, now there's clarity. Understand, if you talk to Joshua about why he is successful right now, Joshua simply says, hey, you know, I have a great team in place. If you talk to Davis, <laughs> he says, hey, look, you know, Joshua is basically training himself. We're just offering him some advice along the way. Folks, that's how guys talk before there's a coup. That's how guys talk before they storm the palace. Take the keys to the kingdom. Oust the incumbent. I believe Joshua feels that everything is in place for that coup. Right? So let me just say this now. The secret to this fight. And let me also tip my hand. Right? Because understand, Joshua is immensely talented, but I believe the heavyweight division right now, that's right, the glamour division, is the deepest division in boxing. Right, folks? I'm, I'm just telling you, there's several men who could be king at heavyweight. There are guys who haven't had the opportunity who now are getting the opportunity. Right? We think 135's loaded. Right? We say, oh, wow, you know, Devontae Davis, uh, Shakur Stevenson, uh, Lomachenko. You know, we think that's loaded. Folks, the heavyweight division has more than twice the guys who could be king. Just food for thought. And I believe the group to look at, and I know this is controversial, People can let me have it in the comment section of this video, right? Somebody said to me, and I thought it was an interesting comment, they said, Dwyer, two years ago, you were saying that Usyk beats everybody. He says, now you have everybody beating Usyk, right? No, that's not true, but I don't think Usyk's unbeatable. Folks, he's now in his late 30s, crying out loud. They're also sparring stories. Well, understand, I need for people... And I'm very impressed with Anthony Joshua right now. Very impressed. But I need for people to look at the immigrants to the United Kingdom right now. Right? The guys hanging around, British promoters. The guys who fight out of different parts of the UK, who aren't from the UK. Right? Look at this version of Joseph Parker. We're underplaying him. I'm not sure why. Right? How is Anthony Joshua in line to fight Tyson Fury if Fury beats uh, Alexander Usyk? How's that possible in a world where Joe Parker has just beaten Deontay Wilder and Xili Zhang? How's that possible, folks? Xili Zhang. Folks, let's not get carried away here. Xili Zhang has lost to two guys. Philippe Ergovic. And, of course, Joe Parker. And let's be real here, right? One of the questions with Zhili Zhang, who's older, is stamina. But in the two fights he lost, he's standing at the end of 12 rounds. Right? Let's just be real. Martin Bacoli. Folks, one of the sparring stories involving Usyk involves Bacoli. Right? Just understand, Bacoli is long-range volume. He has a big fight. It's one of the fights of the summer. Against big baby Jared Anderson. Right? You heard me mention Philly Bergovic. Folks, we've all watched a lot of boxing matches. I'm not sure if I've seen a boxing match where a guy lands as many flush right hands as Ergovic landed against Daniel Dubois. Right, as I make this video, for me personally, in an Ergovic Anthony Joshua fight, Ergovic would be the betting side of the play. Right? Hell, it's my money, I'll, I'll do with it what I want. Right? I'm not convinced that Ergovic's one loss 
a fight where he's clearly winning on the scorecards at the time of the stoppage, right? I'll agree the fight had bad optics. Ergovic needs to work on presentation, right? If nothing's happening in the round, he needs to at least look energetic, right? But the one fight he lost to Dubois, right? Let's just say Ergovic throws down a blistering first six rounds, right? Blistering. I believe that group, that group, right, along with, you know, Luis Ortiz, I don't care how old Ortiz is, slick southpaw, right, now that Deontay Wilder's in decline, Ortiz no longer has to worry about Wilder, right, I think these young guys would have a problem dealing with KG vets, particularly slick southpaw KG vets. Right? I believe the heavyweight division is much deeper than people think. Let's get back to this fight. The Joshua Dubois fight. Now, Dubois can be, this is the best way I can put it, he can be blessed offensively. Right? The fighter who lost to Joe Joyce wasn't blessed offensively. The fighter who lost to Usyk was not blessed offensively, right? You were looking at those fights, a few rounds passed, and you thought, when is Dubois going to step on the gas? And it was jarring, because you understand Dubois has power and accuracy married to hand speed. In other words, this is the guy who you almost want, the Floyd Mayweather, who was so upset during a Gervonta Davis fight, the one against Mario Barrios, that between rounds, Mayweather gets out of the crowd, goes to Gervonta Davis's corner, and is telling Gervonta, hey man, you got to get going. You almost hope that, you know, during the Joe Joyce fight, Mayweather had been there to jump up, go over to Dubois' corner, right? Have the star power that comes with being a Hall of Fame unbeaten fighter, right? So you have the fighter's attention, and then you tell the guy, look, man, what are you doing? Let your hands go. Well, we wondered what would happen if Dubois lets his hands go. Then came the Philippe Ergovic fight. Now, what I'm going to say is, of course, controversial, whatever. I'm just giving you my take. Ergovic is qualitatively a better fighter than Daniel Dubois, in my eyes, right? Ergovic lost the fight. Ergovic's bleeding. Ergovic has eye injuries. Okay, look, I, I get it. I know there are many people who, you know, have amnesia after knockouts, right? They see Daniel Dubois landing home run shots, and they're sudden. Right? You saw that Dubois overlook the fact that he was actually losing the rounds. You saw the punching power. You saw the determination. And you thought to yourself, my goodness, when this guy gets in the fast lane, he can pass a lot of cars, can he? Right? But what I want people to consider, and this is really an important point, at least to me, is whether Dubois has made a deal with the devil. How many right hands did he take from Ergovic? Right, folks, I'm telling you, a lot of those right hands would have turned out the lights on many fighters. Fighters who don't get out of the way of punches, Joe Joyce, right, Dubois against Ergovic, I'm just telling you that sooner or later, that catches up with them. Right? You cannot eat right hands, even if you see them coming and you strengthen your neck. You certainly can't eat that many right hands against a blessed puncher like Anthony Joshua. Right? For me, though, the biggest secret to this fight is the fact that Dubois doesn't go 12 rounds. He has problems later in fights. 
This is the guy in his 20s who, if it's not going his way, and if he has an injury, and I don't blame him, right? If I have a choice between beating Joe Joyce or losing an eye, I'm going to, you know, <laughs> beating Joe Joyce and losing an eye or keeping two eyes, I'm going to keep two eyes, right? I don't blame him, but just understand, when it gets to the later rounds, if Daniel Dubois does not feel that he's on top, he's going to take a knee. Right? The Usyk fight. Here's a fight where Dubois knocks down Usyk. Now, whatever we feel, I believe Dubois believes that punch was legit. I'm telling you, there are many guys who would have been in there with a broken leg if they knocked down the champ. If they were facing a Tyson Fury and they knock him down, right, and Fury gets off the canvas and it's rough and tumble. Let's say Fury's landing jabs. You're getting hit and hurt with shots. But a lot of guys are going to say, man, how many other days in my life am I going to have Tyson Fury or Alexander Usyk on the canvas? Well, this is the night it happened. I'm going to close the deal here. They're going to have to stop me. I'm not going to stop myself. That's not Daniel Dubois, is it? The last time Dubois went the distance in a fight was against an overly defensive kingpin, Kevin Johnson, and that was in not 2022, not 2021, not 2020, not 2019.